Please stand and face the rear as we begin with a memorial celebration on our those who died in wars and conflicts. Let us pray. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we command and commend to you, Almighty God, all of those who remember this memorial day. We give thanks that you have blessed us by their work and their lives. May the saints of the church inspire us with faithful living and dedicated service. And may they be welcomed by you to an honored place at your table when you bring all call into your kingdom on that great last day. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend those who have given their lives in service to our country. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flock, sinners of your own kingdom. Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of their lasting peace, and into the glorious company of all your saints. The Lord bless them and keep them. The Lord make his face shine upon them and be gracious to them. The Lord look upon them in his favor and give them his peace. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let thy perfection shine upon them. Amen. Amen. O oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains and majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful, for pilgrim feet, whose stern and passion stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thy every flaw, confirm my soul in self-control, by liberty and law. O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country love, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine, so all success be nobleness, and every gain divine. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, my alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O oh, beautiful for halcyon skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains majesties above the enamel. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, till souls wax fair as earth and air, and music heart and sea. O beautiful for pilgrim feet, who stir in passion stress, thoroughfare for freedom feet across the wilderness. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, till paths be wrought through wilds of thought. Like a pilgrim's foot and knee. O beautiful for glory tale of liberating strife, when once and twice our man's avail, men lavish precious life. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, till selfish gain no longer strain the banner of the free. O beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years. Thy alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, till nobler men be once again thy brighter jubilee.
welcome on this feast day of the Holy Trinity. Today the church focuses on God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all of our readings will focus on the identity of our God as well. To carry on our Memorial Day theme, uh, Becky's going to be playing an American composer as the prelude, George Gershwin, which you've probably heard of. She'll be playing one of his famous piano preludes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let, let us rejoice and be glad in it. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the raising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to the Most High, to declare the Lord's love in the morning and his faithfulness at the close of the day. Blessed is the one who redeems and saves us. Blessed is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our one God in three persons, you have expressed your identity in the mystery of the Trinity. Reminding us that our minds cannot grasp the fullness of your mind, our hearts cannot feel the depths of your heart, and our hands cannot master the work you have done. Humble us by the revelation of your glorious nature, that we will faithfully worship, listen, and serve you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First lesson is from Wisdom 13. Unfortunate people who see the beauty of the world and search for God, but fall short in finding Him, end up setting their hopes on dead things. These are people who give the name gods to the work of human hands, like gold and silver made into statues and charms, or like a useless chunk of stone or crystal chiseled and cut even by ancient hands. It is like the skilled woodcutter who may saw down a tree that is easy to handle, and he skillfully strips off all its bark, and then with fine workmanship forms a very useful bowl that can be used in daily life, burning the shavings to prepare a meal, 
and eating a fine meal because of his work. But afterwards, he finds a scrap of wood he had thrown away because it was not useful for much of anything, a crooked stick that was full of knots. However, the woodcutter takes this useless stick and carefully carves it in his free time, shaping it with skills that were not used to make useful things at work, but skills he has acquired while having nothing else to do. So he carves a man, or a little animal, and he gives it a nice coat of red paint to cover up the knots and other blemishes on its surface. Then he makes a little space for it on his shelf and sets it up there carefully, making certain that it not fall off because it is only a statue and cannot keep itself up on the shelf. It is in need of help to stay put. Still, when the woodcutter prays about his possessions and his marriage and his children, he is not ashamed to address this lifeless thing. He even appeals for help from this thing that is weak. He prays for life to a thing that is dead. For aid, he entreats a thing that is utterly inexperienced. For a safe and successful journey, he prays to a thing that cannot even take a single step. For earning a living and having adequate work and good success with his craft, he asks for strength from a thing whose hands have no strength at all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, we will now read uh, Psalm 29 responsibly. It's a typo in the bulletin. It's not Psalm 20. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord and the beauty of the The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kaddish. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees cry and strips our earth and air. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the blood. The Lord sits in throne as a king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The second lesson is from Romans 1. St. Paul writes that the wrath of God is shown from heavens against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of those people who suppress the truth about God by their unrighteousness. God shows his wrath because he himself has shown them the way to know him. From the very creation itself, even the invisible aspects of God can be perceived, his eternal power and his essence. This can be understood from the things God made, so these people are without any defense. They should know God. But even though they didn't know the truth about God, they still did not glorify God as God or give thanks to God. Instead, they focused only on themselves, and then their misunderstanding hearts were darkened. And so, while claiming they were wise, they were actually foolish. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for an image of a mortal human being, and of birds, and of four-footed animals, and of reptiles. Because they decided to do this, God handed them over to the desires of their hearts, into their impurity, to their own dishonoring of their bodies. This happened to anyone who exchanged God's truth for a lie and worshipped and offered cultic service to what the Creator had created, rather than to the one God who is the Creator, who is blessed into the ages. Amen. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise. Father, all glorious, Lord, all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of the days. Come, thou incarnate word, merciful, mighty Lord, our prayer attend. Come, and thy people bless, and give thy word success, and let thy righteousness on us descend. Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou, who almighty art, rule now in every heart, never from us depart, spirit of power. To thee, great one in three, eternal praises be, hence evermore. Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. They went to meet him on the mountain in Galilee. When they saw him there, they both worshipped him, and at the same time, they still had doubts about what was happening. Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So go, make everyone a disciple by baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach everyone to obey everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, from now until the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Three guys walk into a bar. Do you know that one, Victor? <laughs> I know several of them. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, since it's Trinity Sunday, I thought it appropriate if we stick to the theme of three. So, three guys walk into a bar. And, let's face it, we probably should not try to take ourselves or this topic too seriously when we're going to just spend one day out of the year and only a couple of minutes on this Sunday focusing on something the church has been wrestling with for two millennia. So three guys walk into a bar. And as Victor said, I googled it and I was surprised actually to find out that there were only 6,040 hits. I really, I thought there'd be more. And it turns out if you just change the wording a little bit and make it three men walk into a bar, you get 17,900 hits. Now that's what I was expecting. It's all in the wording, which is kind of like the Trinity. It's all in the wording. In fact, the word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible anywhere. You will not find it. If you do in your Bible, it's a typo. It's just a word that the church made up to try and contemplate, conceive, talk about what Jesus was talking about when he said stuff like we just heard in the gospel. Go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we're going to hear in a minute, if he had just changed the wording a little bit, we wouldn't have to worry about all this Trinity stuff. Now, actually, if you make it three women walk into a bar, you get 6,900 hits, which is more than three guys walk into a bar, but clearly not as many as three men walk into a bar. 
Which reminds me that even though the Lutheran Church is thought of as a really progressive church, and even though popping up more and more for the Trinity is the, the idea of mother, child, and holy wisdom, that doesn't compare to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in its occurrence. And there's probably good reason for that. I mean, the church is debating all of that even now as we continue to figure out what this trinity is and what it means. Now, since I was on Google, just for fun, I Googled three Republicans walk into a bar. 149 hits. And then, of course, I had to do three Democrats walk into a bar. 100 less hits. And not that many more than three pastors walk into a bar. I don't know if there's a correlation or not. I'm not saying that. I was surprised to find out that there was only one hit for three firemen walk into a bar. Now, of course, you're all very smart and you're deducing that this means one of two things. Either it means when you go into a bar, your chances of running into a female pastor Democrat firefighter are pretty slim, or nobody's telling any jokes about them. Having known some female pastor Democrat firefighters, I'll go with the latter. They're no joking matter. Wonderful people. But three guys walk into a bar. Now, the other thing I find interesting about the church's doctrine of the Trinity is that it hasn't been developed over 2,000 years as a proactive way of trying to describe who our God is. Instead, it's been more of a reactive definition of saying who our God is not. For example, the church really only got rolling with a doctrine of the Trinity in about the 3rd or 4th century, when this priest named Arius started to become really popular in North Africa, around the city of Alexandria, which in the early church was one of the four major centers of Christianity, with along, along with, you guessed it, Jerusalem, Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria. And Arius became really popular because he was preaching to people that Jesus was born in Bethlehem to Mary and Joseph. And that meant Jesus wasn't around at all for any of that Old Testament stuff. And that made sense to everybody. Well, almost everybody. The theologians of the church scratched their heads and thought, well, what does that mean for what we read in the Gospels? Like, John chapter 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things came into being that are in being through him. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then the theologians were thinking, well, you know, this is really creating a hierarchy of gods. We've got God the Father, who exists in all time, and then we've got God the Son, who comes along a bit later, and then where do we put God the Spirit in this? This is not what we think of our God. So the church ended up condemning Arius and his followers as heretics, excommunicated them, and then exiled them. And that's why today, when we say the Nicene Creed and we talk about Jesus in the second article, we say things like, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. And why, when we get to the Holy Spirit, we say, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. It's all left over from Eric's. But I'm getting into too much heavy theology here. I wanted to keep it light. We shouldn't take ourselves too seriously about this. So three guys walk into a bar where the bartender is a Lutheran. <laughs> now, it might be handy, actually, if we had followed Arius and kind of created a hierarchy of gods because then you, you might have some options to go to, and that could kind of be convenient. You're like a kid who wants something and goes to one parent and doesn't get the right answer. Because then what do you do next? Great, you go to the other parent, and you hope you're gonna get the right answer there, and if that doesn't work out, you go to grandma. 
Wouldn't that be great if we could do that with God? Uh, kind of unfortunate that in Scripture we hear over and over again that the Lord our God is one. And we hear over and over again in Scripture that our one God is actually really jealous and doesn't want us to be giving our hope, faith, and love to any other God or gods. We're kind of stuck with this one. But three guys, they walk into a bar where the bartender is a Lutheran, and he recognizes that it's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, the other thing about this Holy Trinity is what Jesus actually says there at the end of Matthew. You know, God's people were doing just fine until Jesus came along with their concept of God. It seems like Jesus messed things up, really. I mean, he says stuff like we just heard, where go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How does that work? Is he just making a grammatical error? Shouldn't it be plural in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I mean, you've seen me do five baptisms in the last month. I was starting to get worried about the second or third one that you were wondering, how, how dense is Pastor Chris? Why doesn't he fix this? He keeps saying in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Doesn't he know it's supposed to be plural? Or maybe you were thinking, I'm just taking a shortcut to saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. No, I knew better. I'm just quoting Jesus. I knew it would make more sense to turn it into a plural. I knew it would make more sense to break it down into three different names. But that's not what Jesus does. So I was just doing what Jesus does. Because I don't want to make a mistake here. I don't want to be baptizing people as children of a different God or some other gods. I don't want to be making them members of some other community other than the church. The God I want to talk about is the one God who has revealed God's self as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that creates all things. The God I want to talk about is the one who makes promises to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and has shown throughout history over and over again that this is a God who keeps promises, who will deliver on these promises, and that nothing can stop this God from delivering on the promises. And I want to talk about the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who inspires us to proclaim the faithfulness of this God, that inspires us to listen to and learn and study and trust the word that this God has spoken. That's the God that I want to talk about. And yet sometimes it's not the most convenient God. It's not the easiest or the simplest to follow or to listen to or understand. And I think I had some good ideas about how to fix things. But unlike most of the other stuff in our lives, this is one thing we don't get to customize the way that we want to. We cannot create for ourselves our own personal God. Well, I take that back. We can, just as we heard Margaret reading in the first lesson from the Wisdom of Solomon. We can be just like the woodcutter who carves himself the god of his own design. It's called an idol. But if you want a god that you can put your trust in, that you can have faith in, that you can take hope in, then you have to let God be God, whatever that means. Whatever that means. But too much heavy theology. I know, I know. It's supposed to keep it light. My apologies. 
Three guys walk into a bar where the bartender is a Lutheran, and he recognizes it's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And he says, welcome, you guys are in luck. I've got one seat left at the bar. Thanks, you guys laughed at first service. It was like, <laughs> crash and burn. My career was over. Please join me in the hymn of the day. Holy God, we praise your name. Lord of all, we bow before you. All on earth your scepter claim. All in heaven above adore you. Infinite, your vast domain, everlasting is your name. Hark, the glad celestial hymn, angel choirs above are raising, cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising. Fill the heavens with sweet accord, holy, holy, holy Lord. Lo, the apostolic train, join your sacred name to Allah. Prophets swell the glad refrain. And from morn to set of sun, through the church, the song goes on. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name you. Though in essence only one, undivided God we claim you. And adoring, bend the knee while we honor the mystery. our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. For the offertory, Becky will be playing another American composer, an African-American composer that uh, she played back uh, during Black History Month in January. His name is Deet, and she'll be playing his song.
Let us pray. Living God, we praise you for the abundant blessings of this life. In humble recognition of the love you always show to us, we bring these gifts and ourselves as our thanks. Use them and us to bear the fruit of goodness and grace, so that your glory will be known to all. In Jesus' name we pray. And now we'll pray together as God's people. At the end of each petition, I will say, Gracious Lord, I ask you to respond, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you reveal yourself as a one, faithful, merciful, and loving God in three persons. But the marvel of this mystery humble us to stand in awe of all that you are and all that you do, that we may not seek to put you into the box of our concepts or our convenience. Gracious Lord, we pray your blessing on all who are traveling this weekend. Give them safe journeys and happy homecoming. Gracious Lord, we pray that the peace being built between Israel and Palestine continues to grow. We ask that you inspire all world leaders to see that it is in their best interest and the best interest of all people to pursue justice and peace within their governments and between the nations. Gracious Lord, We pray for the far too many who are still becoming ill and dying from COVID. Empower those who are caring for the sick and the dying, that they may be sustained in their work with supplies and assistance and the protection that they need and deserve. Drive those with the power and authority to allocate and distribute resources to do so in equitable and effective ways. Soften our hearts of compassion and steal our discipline and determination to do whatever is necessary to limit the continued spread of this virus. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for the rain that is watering our gardens and farms, our orchards and vineyards. But as we hear of drought and dryness in the West and fears of another season of terrible fires, let us be reminded that we have a critical role to play in how well the system of creation works, or how broken those systems become. Sustain us as good stewards, willingly caring for ourselves through our care for creation. Gracious Lord, we pray your blessing on graduates as they look ahead to new schools or search for new jobs. Guide their paths into opportunities to use their skills and knowledge to do good things for themselves and for others. Gracious Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ of the Yorktown Assemblies of God as they try to recover from the fire. Bless them with generous insurance adjusters, quick access to contractors and materials, and many willing hands helping to clean up and set up so that they can be worshiping you together again in their space very soon. Gracious Lord. Amen. We pray that you restore the health and the wholeness of those who are on Grace's prayer list and those that we bring before you now.
Gracious Lord, we pray that you hear the prayers that we offer for ourselves. Gracious Lord, and finally we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom power and the glory. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.